What up guys, the Delta 016 here with another gun for the Kinex Armory. And this time we're going back in time. Now if you remember last episode we had the AUG and it was on my birthday. Um that was actually more than a week ago. Yeah, more than a week ago. Um and that was considered a modern assault rifle. So now we're backtracking to about the 1930s with the uh with a British classic, the Bren. Um, I do realise the stock doesn't look like the real thing, but come on, with with Connects, let's see you try and make a Bren gun stock that's simple. It's not exactly easy, uh, but everything else I've got pretty close to it. I've got the magazine as curved as I could get it, which in this case means just putting it on a straight angle. Uh, we got the working bolt, as always. We got the carrying handle. The carrying handle is used, yes, for carrying the gun, but it's also used for removing the barrel. So we have the barrel here with the uh, trumpet uh, opening, I guess. Uh, we got the bipod, which will actually open up when I get to it. Uh, the sights, you will notice the sights are a little bit misaligned. They're on the little thing that poke out from the side. There's a reason behind that. And if I can show you it, I don't know if you can, there we go. That's why, because, um, and you know, I don't really want to hate on Call of Duty, but it got it wrong for the actual weapon. Uh, for some reason it gets it right for a completely different gun uh, when it's used. So, um, I mean, it's been used in Call of Duty, uh, to, if I remember, yeah, Finest Hour, United Offensive, Call of Duty 2, uh, it didn't appear in Big Red 1, but it had... I guess a little bit of an appearance because the French uh, Chateau Le Rault or something um, is a similar design. Um, then we had it in Call of Duty 3 and then it didn't appear. Um, it didn't appear again after that. It didn't even appear in uh, World at War um, or World at War Final Fronts. But technically it did appear in World at War because the, uh, the Japanese Type 99 is a similar design again. Um, now what I was saying about the accuracy of this, Call of Duty has it like that, well he's holding the carrying handle, but then he fires it from the shoulder. Now my grandfather actually fired the Bren, and he said the recoil of it was that it was so powerful when it was fired, you couldn't actually fire it from the shoulder standing up, because it would just, you know, it would smash your shoulder and would send you flying. So what they did was they'd fire it from the hip, and I'm not making this up, they did actually fire it from the hip, like an action movie, um, and then they would also fire it from an emplaced position like any other machine gun. So they'd set it up like that, they'd set it, and then they just lay down the fire on the enemy, came time to reload, they'd remove the magazine, work the bolt, that's what that orange bit is, that's the uh, magazine release, like you have on the AK-47. Um, and then occasionally the barrel would overheat, so they'd use the carrying handle to remove it and sliding a new barrel. That's how great this gun is. Um, so what I'm on about is that Call of Duty has it firing from the shoulder, never from a bipod, and yet for weapon called the MG34 in Call of Duty 3 uh, when you do aim down the sights with the MG34 you uh, you drop down onto a bipod now they should have actually done that for the Bren it would have been more accurate to history um, so yeah um, but apart from that it's a great gun the recoil yeah they got that accurate the recoil is intense for the gun you know, it bounces around all over the place, so they used to, you know, burst fire it. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, the Bren, this shows how good the Bren was, because it served the British Army for decades. Um, I think it, it entered service in the 30s, I can't remember, I got 1937 in my head, but it probably isn't 1937, it might be, I don't know. Um, I'll probably put it in the description. But it served right from the 1930s. It saw service right through World War II. Uh, when the British were in Korea, uh, they were armed with that. 
Um, but over the years, the curved magazine was changed to a more straight one because the uh, the caliber um, the caliber changed um, because of NATO and UN and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it saw service right through the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and even saw service right up into the 1980s. In 1982, with the uh, with the British in the Falklands. Um, by that time, we were starting to use the uh, the FN mag, the L. I actually don't know what the L designation is for it, um, but we started using the British manufactured version of the FN mag uh, alongside the Bren. But then after the Falklands, the Bren kind of was kind of fizzled out of service, and we started using the mag more often. Um, but that shows. I mean, with Britain, we were pretty much broke after the war. After World War Two, we were broke. We didn't have the money to make new guns, so we were basically licensed versions by the countries. We were using a Belg a, a British manufactured FNFAL um, for most of the Cold War. Um, it's only re it's only recently in the 80s that we designed the SA-80 and used that in combat, and we're still using it in combat. Uh, but Britain hasn't really apart from the SA-80, hasn't really had its own homegrown manufactured gun since the uh, since the 30s, or the 50s rather, because the Sterling submachine gun, which was used for the E-11 from Star Wars, check the link in the, in the description for that. Um, so yeah, the, the Bren, I, w I will say it is a pretty cool weapon. I fired it, said in speech marks, um, at Spetchley Park, um, going around the camps, a Bren gun was set up, and the guy showed me the inside of the magazine, showed the they were fake bullets, they wouldn't be loaded in, uh, and I actually got to uh, pull the cock in handle, load it, and fire it, and the kick, even though it wasn't firing a projectile, the kick of it was, wow, it didn't hurt my shoulder, but I sure as hell felt it, uh, and even tried carrying it, boy is it heavy, it's massive. Um, but you know, I guess it just shows that it shows what job it was for. It was a machine gun. It wasn't really meant for uh, in the field firing like uh, like an assault rifle. But yeah, there aren't really any attachments for this gun because um, it because it didn't appear in the uh, it didn't appear in World at War. So I can only guess at attachments, and I've got the bipod on there. That's the only attachment that I can picture that the uh, Type 99 has. It wasn't in the Call of Duty 3 multiplayer, and even then they didn't have attachments on uh, on there. And uh, yeah, like I said, it hasn't been seen in a Call of Duty game since uh, since Call of Duty 3. So I can't really say about attachments, aside from the bipod, which was there always. The brand always had the bipod. But, you know, guess we just had to deal with it. So, this has been the Bren gun from Call of Duty, right from the first one, up to number two, and then number three, with, obviously, the bipod. This has been the Delta 016. Keep your head on the swivel.